The Squat Max MD by Titan Fitness is one of the releases I've been most looking forward to, and it might just be the best thing Titan's ever released. As a versatile piece of equipment, there's a lot to be excited about. Titan's collaboration with Brian Hennessy has resulted in an upgraded and refined machine that warrants serious consideration for many home gym spaces. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you're used to me joking about squatting. Now, it's not that I don't like squatting, it's that I hate it. So for me to endorse something that's literally named after squats is a big deal. And there's a lot to like about the Squat Max. With this thing, I was finally able to squat four plates. That's not what that means. Okay, I said you didn't actually need to be in here while I'm filming. Oh, okay, well, I'll let you make a fool of yourself all on your own. <laughs> okay, that, that's fair, but back on track. Since I always try to be thorough and accurate as possible, I've broken this review down into a few parts, and I've also been talking with Brian Hennessy, the inventor, you can go, of Squat Max for a while about this new version and what's still coming from him in this collaboration with Titan. Titan has added some pretty good upgrades over the older model while making it much less expensive, but there are a few issues that really could affect you that you'll want to stick around to hear about. And we're reviewing the standalone version because it's the more versatile of the two. The rack mounted is almost functionally identical, but you'll have to make sure it fits your rack. It's uh, marketed to fit uprights ranging from 30 to 48 inches apart, so it will fit a ton of racks, but we chose this one because the rack mounted option doesn't have the holes for the seat and other attachments that we're gonna talk about. Before we get too far into this, let's quickly talk about shipping and assembly because that hasn't always been Titan's strongest suit, but the packaging on this thing is great and mine came without a scratch on it. It ships in a large crate and that's important to know because we have to take a minute to celebrate Winnie for using our baby and a $20 bill to bribe the delivery guy to drag it up our gravel driveway. Best wife ever. You guys that know me know that I've been downright brutal to Titan over the years based on some of their decisions. So I'm fully prepared to take credit for every good decision they made with this product. Not Brian Hennessy who decided to collaborate with them and worked incredibly hard to refine the Squat Max over the years. All the credit goes to me. From the great packaging to a good set of instructions that are easy to follow. Sure, some of the pictures may look a little more complex than it is, but the entire build takes about 30 minutes and is really straightforward. So you'd really have to be an idiot to screw something up on the install. Like, let's say, theoretically, you happen to put the legs on backwards. That would be embarrassing and entirely your own fault. Let's talk about why you might want a belt squat because that's what people ask most often when we posted about this on our Instagram. And I know what you're thinking. Your partner is gonna say something to the effect of, why do you need another piece of equipment? What's a belt squat gonna do that you can't already? And then you say, I'm glad you asked, honey, and then give them this convenient list I've made for you. One, it allows you to squat without loading the spine. Here, you're placing a load on your hips so you can get in more volume, do some accessory work, or maybe you just need to give your back a break, which would help you with uh, household chores like carrying groceries or laundry upstairs. Two, if you have back or shoulder problems, you can work around them since you don't need to use your upper body with a belt squat. Three, at least with the Squat Max, your kids will love this thing. Remember, you're not buying it for you, it's for them. Maybe it's a spaceship, a family photo op, or part of their obstacle course. And four, it's a very versatile piece of equipment. Not that we're saying we're not gonna buy more stuff after this, let's not be silly, but you can do a lot with a belt squat, especially this one. The number of exercises you can perform on the Squat Max is pretty incredible, and that's not even including various squat forms and variations like wide squats, split squats, or 
using the seat for box squats? What about the integrated band pegs that let you create variations on top of your variations. There's sumo deadlifts and other pull variations, and I've even seen Brian Hennessy performing push-ups on this thing. But obviously, the only thing you guys really care about is can you do curls with it? But honestly, it's kind of just a silly question. Of course you can. They should have named this thing the Curl Max MD. Now, I'm not saying I'm gonna use it for all those things, but I've spent a lot of hours testing out movements on this, and most home gym owners are much more creative than me, so you'll come up with a ton more than I could ever think of. And the Squat Max isn't exactly a new product. Brian has been refining and perfecting this for over a decade. This is just the latest and greatest version, but all that time has allowed him to come up with other attachments for this thing, like the transformer pin that can be used to offset the load to emphasize the posterior chain or quads. And I've been told by Brian that Titan is developing their own line of attachments for this, like the hip thrust pin, which technically still works with Titan's version, but the chest supported row attachment only kind of works. Brian has even gone so far as to send me videos of him testing the old attachments on this Titan version. So while you can force it a little bit, you're mixing metric and customary, so the pop pin stuff isn't really going to work. But even if you don't add on to this, there's still a lot that can be done with it. Try some marches and Remember, it doesn't matter how silly you look because it's a home gym and nobody can see you. So that's why you open the garage door and stare at people walking by to show them you're the neighborhood alpha. And number five, the most important of them all. Just tell them it's to grow that cake and show them a clip of me or Winnie using it. If that doesn't work, nothing will. Of course, there are different styles of belt squats, some more expensive, some much less, but they basically come down to three different configurations. There's the lever arm style, whether that's a standalone like a pit shark or rack mounted option like the mammoth belt squat. You've got pulley based systems, the most popular being the rogue rhino, and then there's free weight style, the squat max. So let's do some comparisons because that'll better explain why this is so special. Personally, I don't love lever style belt squats, and I say that owning a few, including the Bell's Belt Squat 2.0, which I promised to review probably a year ago, but in my defense, we've talked to them about a 3.0, so it doesn't really make sense for me to do extra squats in a 2.0 review, I could just wait for the new one, right? Now, just because I don't love them doesn't mean they're not great or versatile, but since the belt is attached to a lever, they can pull you forward and force you to move along the path of the lever a little. Because of all the wear and tear I've done to my knees running competitively over the years, I'm very protective over them and a lot of lever belt squats tend to aggravate my knees a little because they change the natural movement pattern unlike the squat max where it's a vertical motion. You can save a ton of money with rack mounted versions which makes them very appealing but unless you're using something like Sorenex's J squat that has a built in kickstand, getting into position with them can be pretty awkward. Also, lever belt squats don't have a true one-to-one -one weight ratio like this does since you're directly connected to a free hanging weight on the squat max. Some of those same things can be said about cable-based belt squats, and since Rogue's Rhino is king here, I'll refer to that in this comparison. Though, I should probably preface this by saying I know a lot of you see this classy gentleman before you with all his fancy equipment and think, wow, this guy's got it made, but this channel success is due to my irresponsible spending, your illogical support and encouragement, and the enabling companies that send me free stuff like Titan did with this Squat Max. And the hard truth is I can't actually afford a lot of the equipment we have, but you can help that by using our affiliate links in the description, which gives us a small commission based on your purchase with no cost to you. So 
Why the long-winded pitch? I don't actually own a rhino, but my buddy gives me free reign of the 35,000 square foot commercial gym he runs, and it's my favorite thing there. It does have several advantages over the Squat Max. It's a little more versatile, especially if you hook the rack mounted version up to a pulley in your rack. It's made in America, and now that Titan is making the Squat Max, this is imported, though that did allow Titan to bring the cost down considerably while adding a lot of upgrades that we'll talk about in a minute. And the Rhino now costs about $900 more, regardless of which version you buy. I do find it to feel more natural than a lever-based system, but you're still attached to a pulley, which can guide the movement some, and pulley systems are inherently more complex than any other belt squat. And more parts means more problems. So if you're not loading the sides equally or you're just using your Rhino a ton, that UHMW that the trolley runs on will need to be replaced at some point. Which brings us to the Squat Max. And to me, this is the best option for squatting because it most closely resembles the actual movement. Since it has a free hanging weight, the motion is smooth because there's nothing influencing your path and you're directly connected to the weight you're moving and they've even done independent studies on it versus other systems and found that this is the one that most closely resembles a squat but if you don't want to read all that then just listen to some guy who thinks he's special because he got a camera and too much equipment there's genius in its simplicity but it's probably best explained by me demonstrating it and since there's no way i'm actually gonna fit this on camera because i plan things so well we'll just ignore this cut there you go so smooth but this does demonstrate one of the issues you might have with the squat max and that's in its footprint particularly the 20 inch platform height if you're dealing with low ceilings but i'll outline other problems in a bit First, let's talk about the seat, which is genius because not only is it easily adjustable with these pop pins, but it gives you a chance to sit and debate what you're doing with your life before you actually squat. Titan's upgraded the seat and it's much more comfortable with this vinyl and padding. And although it's designed to be used for box squats, I actually use it a lot of time like I'm doing now. I'll set it below parallel of my squat and then sit on it while I set my belt up and get ready for the movement, which makes setup so much easier and safer than loading from the floor with some lever-based systems. You don't have to hoist the weight up before you can get into your proper position. But even without the seat, they've got these locks, these safeties built into the handles. So you're not loading everything up from a difficult spot. It can still be a little awkward to get into your starting position, but that's true of all belt squats. And this is definitely one of the best ones I've seen in that regard. All right, we're pretty well set here. I've aligned my feet with these X's that Titan has added to help you with positioning. Then I just rotate the handles, which removes the safeties and complete the movement. Now, what makes the Squat Max special is this weight pin is free floating, which also makes this thing pretty humbling, especially if you're used to belt squats that give you a mechanical advantage. And unlike just kind of strapping some weight to a belt and letting it hang there, there's a guide rod here that <laughs> keeps this thing from swinging. Titans also coated the guide rod with a polymer to make movement smoother and quieter than before. And it is pretty quiet and smooth, though that coating might wear down over time, but Brian says his old PVC pipe hack that you could use on the old one still works on this one. Also, this eye bolt up top swivels <laughs> so you can work it from any angle. And if it looks tricky for me to navigate up here and you're looking at me thinking my squat stance isn't that wide, they've included this easy to swap out plate that changes this gap from just over 19 inches wide to a little under 15. So you'll have to use 25s with it, or if you're really desperate, 35s. All right, I've been standing up here awkwardly long enough. I'm gonna step down and talk about what's different in this new version. I've already hit on some of the changes Titan's made to the Squat Max, but there are a few other very important ones we need to talk about. 
Overall, the machine is fairly similar, though you could probably argue it's even more stable now that they're using 3x3 11 gauge steel tubing on the frame and the platform is 11 gauge too. This thing is rock solid with a 1300 pound weight capacity on the loading pin and a thousand pounds on the belt. Not that you'll ever really be able to get that kind of weight onto this pin, but remember, you can also add band tension, and this thing doesn't budge at all. The powder coating is applied cleanly, and it's actually fairly grippy, and the welds are well done too. Honestly, the build quality is phenomenal on this, and much higher than we typically expect from Titan, but they did miss an opportunity here because I was originally really excited thinking about all the things you could stick into these one inch holes, but they're not drilled out on the other side. It would have been nice to be able to put weight horns on this or leg rollers. I'm not sure, but the three by three one inch ecosystem has so much potential for being built off of. Titans made the handles from round tubing instead of the old square style, which has allowed them to knurl them, which is a nice touch. They've also added wheels and a handle, which makes it movable, but it is heavy, so don't expect your wife to be super excited if you do ask her to move it. The handle spacing has been increased from about 16 and a half inches to 18, which is subtle, but it's nice having a little more room to operate in the middle here. But not every change has been for the better because on the older Squat Max, the cross member on the bottom used to sit lower, basically flush to the floor, whereas Titans is raised up some. So we really need to talk about why that really matters. I tried this on literally anyone who would let me strap them to this thing. Anyway, my wife is 5'6 and it works fine for her. We tried it on someone at 5'8 without issues. 5'10 was great. I'm six foot and it works very well for me. And we even had my buddy Sarth, who's about half my size at 6'2 and 280 pounds, try it out. And I'd go so far as to say you could probably be seven foot tall and still use the squat max without issue. But if you're under about five, six, or have a similar build to Winnie, she's kind of built like a Barbie doll with her tiny waist, so the belt hangs really low on her. So if you're built like that, you may run into a problem. Let me explain. The belt they include with it has a series of loops. This is still clipped together, but you can still see them. Series of loops so you can clip in at whichever height works best for you in your build. And that's how we were able to easily adjust between all those people I just showed you. Titan's belt is identical to the one Brian had spent years refining and was sending out with the old Squat Max. It's comfortable, easy to get on and off, and well done. But if you want something a little softer, you could probably look at Spud Inc's pillow belt. All right, now for the issue with shorter people, and I'll use Winnie as our demo here because she's right on the cusp of this mattering. And let's be honest, you're probably sick of looking at me and she's much cuter. As she hits parallel on her squat, you can see even though she's adjusted the belt to as high as it can go, she almost bottoms out the machine because of that raised bottom cross member. So how do we help you get deeper if you find yourself needing an extra few inches? You could just use a shorter carabiner. The one they include with the belts uh, kind of a little bit bigger than it needs to be. So here's a smaller one I just had kind of lying around. You could use the transformer pin that Brian made for the Squat Max for people looking to shift the load more to the glutes or to the quad, but it also allows you to lock it lower on the loading pin, which raises it up, allowing you to get really deep. A 5 8 hitch pin would theoretically work too. Honestly, the only thing I don't love about the Squat Max is the vertical loading pin but I don't really see a way around it. I don't care that it's gonna get scuffed and beat up from the loading and unloading process, but it can be a little tedious to load up and take off weight if you're like Winnie and I, where we're constantly swapping weights between sets. You can make the process a little bit easier by putting something between your plates to create a gap, making it easier to grip them and so you aren't really pinching your fingers. Just 
honestly throw some change plates between them, but that won't cost you anything. So I figured I'd be generous and recommend something that will, and that's these foam sled spacers from Admat, which is what I use, and I love them, so I've graciously link them in the description, or you could just buy the sled spacers that Squat Max sells on their website. There's a lot to like about the Squat Max MD, even for me who isn't using it for a barbell squat replacement. I've been using it to warm up for squats before I load the bar, and it's allowed me to get in more volume without loading my back. I find it more comfortable to use than a lot of other belt squats. Sure, you've got to play with your positioning some, but that's true of all belt squats. And you can take balance out of the equation by holding the handles during use, which is great if you've got mobility or flexibility issues, or don't hold on. The machine isn't pushing or pulling you, so it's easy to switch things up. It's beginner friendly because it's so easy to use and because you're not loading your back, it makes it easy to isolate the legs and there's no risk of failure here. I'm not worried about dumping a bar or getting crushed by it. I can really push myself and get everything out of my last set because when I'm done, if I fail the rep, the machine just bottoms out. Dollar for dollar, I think this is the best belt squat on the market for actual squat movements. Are there more versatile options? Sure, but this is very versatile in its own right. It'll last forever and Titan's done a great job with this. Not long ago, I would have said they're really falling behind other companies, but with their new barbells, which we'll be reviewing and move like this, partnering with Brian, who is exactly the kind of creator you wanna see them partner with, well, things are getting interesting. So subscribe because we've got a lot more coming from them. Thanks to our Patreons, we would not be able to do this without you. Thanks for watching, like, comment, and subscribe to help us out in the algorithm. I'll see you next week.